Try calling Sarah today. She needs it. No. Great. I want, I want her to call me. All right, we're official. Hello, hello. Happy December. Happy Friday, everybody. It's been an amazing week. I bet like uh, like many of us, you've been busy. We're all like rushing toward the holidays. I think it's really wonderful. And we're so glad that you're joining us. We got a bunch of people here joining us on Zoom. Please do jump in on the chat and let us know where you're coming from. We love that you come from all over the world. And it's so great to see you. It feels like it's been a little while and um, so glad that you're here. Hello, Anne from Washington, DC. Great to hear and see you here on the chat. We've got a couple of folks raising their hand. Sadly, the way this particular Zoom is set up, we won't be able to grab you on audio. Do throw um, your, your comments in the chat. Hello from Miami Beach, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Awesome. Arizona. My, let's see, what else have we got here? Canada, Calgary, Texas, Ireland. Hello, John from Ireland. So great for you to join us. Hello, Jane from the UK. Lovely, Lynn from Connecticut. So great for you guys to join us. We're so pleased that you're here. Um, Berkeley, California, Germany, wonderful. So happy to see you. I hope that all of you are having an incredible December. We're gearing towards the end of 2021. It's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. For those of you who might be new to us, I'll just say hello. My name is uh, Dr. Shamani Jan. I'm the founder and CEO of the Consciousness and Healing Initiative, and we're so pleased to bring you these webinars with leading lights in the field of healing and healing science, as well as healing practice. We're so excited about our guest today. I'm gonna to introduce him in just a second, just a couple of points of process for you. If you're joining us here on Zoom, hello. We will have a few minutes for questions at the end. We're gonna give Mark also a chance to just share what he's got in his heart and his mind for us today. But we will have some time for questions at the end. And what I'd, uh, what I'd recommend, please, is that if you do have a question for Mark, please put it in the Q&A box, which is on the bottom of your Zoom window. So if you look at the bottom of your Zoom window, You'll see Q&A and you can type your question there. If you type it in chat, we might miss it. So I recommend you do that. But we'll also have some time to just hear from Mark. So if you don't have a burning question, it's totally OK. You can also just sit back and, and listen to the wisdom as it springs forth from Dr. Mark Mincola. If you have not met Mark, let me tell you a little bit about him. I'm so excited that he's joining us today. Mark, you may have seen Mark, first of all, featured in his new film, The Way of Miracles, which has been awarded so many awards at this point worldwide, um, including the best health awareness film of 2021. Mark's also authored seven international best-selling books to date. You may have also caught him on Dr. Oz, ABC Talk Radio, Fox News, and many other national TV shows. And he is so passionate and so talented as a healing practitioner that there's so much wisdom that we can learn from him through his work with over 60,000 people in the past 35 years, working as a nutritional therapist and quantum energy healer. Through his innovative genius, he's integrated ancient Chinese energy healing techniques with cutting edge nutritional science in what he calls electromagnetic muscle testing, a one of a kind approach that zeroes in on each individual's unique nutritional needs. I'm so excited for this conversation. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you. Well, tell us a little bit first, you know, lots of people are interested in the journey. You've spanned a lot of different areas of practice in your life that have brought you to where you are now and the work that you do. Any insights that you'd like to share with us? You've been doing this work for many, many years. What brought you to the place that you're in now and, and what, what fuels your passion for healing others in the way that it does? I think that the answer is simple with my heart. I think that, that I've had such a, a driving passion to make a difference and to help and to heal and to, and to care about helping people to heal themselves and to, and to brighten up their, their inner light and to inspire them to, to alter their process, to move through the transpersonal shifting and to become more soulful and become more deep in their in their connection to their own source. And I think that healing is the inspiration, is, is the promise that actually excited me into growing and evolving and becoming more diverse in the, in the different possibilities that I that I could develop and offer people with. So I think that the passion starts in the heart and it becomes a compassion 
that has a, a heartfelt energy to it that actually is, is ready, willing, and able to reach for anything that can make a difference and, and, to, and to inspire yourself so that you can inspire the, the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well and beautifully put. And uh, indeed, compassion does stem in part from from passion and also from connectedness, right? As you know, Absolutely. at the Consciousness and Healing Initiative, we're very passionate about this area of biofield science and healing. And yes. what Westerners are now calling the biofield, which as you know, but for anybody who hasn't heard that term before, we really describe them as the totality of all the fields of energy and information that guide our healing and guide our health. And so we've talked about this in ancient traditions, so much ancient wisdom, including from the Chinese medicine and Chinese practice perspective on qi, right? On qi as an essential part of what we call the biofield, of course, and there are other parts as well. Um, you have a deep you know, resonance and a, a deep connection with some of these practices from those traditions. Um, anything you'd like to share about your personal experiences with those and, and how they've informed your work? I think that for, for starters, I mean, I've been, I've been inclined to embrace Taoism in, in classical Chinese medicine, which is like traditional Chinese medicine with, with, the, with the spiritual component of it added. And that's always been really resonant with me. So I think that for me, it's been really important to feel the energy of answers. There, there are answers within me. There are answers within us. And I think that, that we can actually create more of a, a connection to the, to the wellspring of answers that flow from within our souls. And I think Taoist medicine and, and traditional ch classical Chinese medicine, rather, have, have inspired me in many respects to tap into the energy of my source and to know that the energy of my source has, has an abundance of responsiveness and energies that actually can lead me to the inspiration of making differences and changes in, in the universe and people's lives and to enhance the energetic properties of the people that I work with. And I think that it's, it's nonverbal. It's, it's, it's much of it is nonverbal. I think it's just like I, I tell people about the, the book, the recent book, the, the Way of Miracles. I didn't write that from a consciousness perspective. I wrote that from a super consciousness perspective, just like the title of the book, which means to me that I just opened up and had the channeling process fire all this energy through me and the trust that I have in, in the universe and the, in the, in the interconnectedness and in, in the connection of all energies that are just designed to devote themselves to making the, the universe a more, more light-filled place. And I think that the objective is to, to, to tap into that and to, and to flow from your source, like I said earlier, uh, with the excitement, the enthusiasm, with the commitment, and with the, with the sense that, that differences are being made non-verbally in many respects, just energetically. So the book, like I was saying a minute ago, could be read literally, it can be it can be extracted from a literal perspective, or, or it can be actually just absorbed. The energy in the book is is from the channeling process. It's spirit. It's it's very energized from the perspective of just feeling the the the, the transmission of frequency of energy. So you don't have to understand the words. You don't have to understand the analytical perspective of reading the book from a literal perspective. You can do that, but you don't have to do that. The energy comes forth from the book, from the channeling source. And it uplifts whoever's whoever's within its within, within its field. It's it's beautiful. Mm. No, it's so beautiful, and it's so beautiful to hear someone talk about that with about their own book, for sure. And I think all of us have had those experiences, whether as writers or readers, of feeling the energy of a person through their words. That it's not it's not something where you're reading the words and it's going through your brain and you're processing it, but there's literally an energetic connection with the light yes. that's kind of carried through that transmission. And I, I love hearing that this was your process for the way of miracles and the book that is. And uh, Jason has put that link to the way of miracles book in the chat. If any of you haven't grabbed Mark's book yet, you might want to do that. It's really a beautiful read. Um, and Mark, you know, in the beginning of that book, you share your own personal story a little bit, things that were unexpected. You share a little bit of this in the film too. your own healing journey. And, and you know where it, where it led you um, and and how it continues to sort of inform and guide you. So you know wondering if you have any uh, chats about that, particularly as we help people, you know, I would say that our community here is probably very well versed in this. But many in the general you know broader vicinity, because we've been raised in this idea of healing meaning curing, 
right? A lot of people still think that healing means curing, right? So they think, yes. okay, well, healing means getting rid of a disease. And yet, I think our experience as healing practitioners and researchers tells us something different. And, and I'm wondering what your journey has been and how you describe what healing is. Well, when you, when you refer to my, my personal miracle, a very powerful experience. I mean, you know Christina very well. Christina Bresson, Priscilla Bresson is a dear friend of both of ours. And Christina is a magnificent film producer and a magnificent human being. But she, um, she and I were planning on this film, The Way of Miracles film. We planned on it for about four years. We, we spent a lot of time on the phone together and a lot of time meeting from time to time and, and mapping out this, this brilliant concept for a film to, to make the world a better place, to heal the world. That's, that's what our goal was. And so we, we decided to, to tap into my patient base and to pick specific select patients who are great stories and great storytellers and to let them share with the world their remarkable healing experiences. I mean, I had one patient that had a, a, a brain tumor that actually went cleared up completely in the period in the course of five months. Another man who was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, who's completely asymptomatic and he's jogging three miles a day. Now we had some beautiful stories. And so we were, we're Christy and I were planning on this, this great film, these terrific patient stories in the middle of it, in the middle of this process, while I was thinking about presenting the stories of other miracles, I was bit by a Lyme tick and I was bit by a Lyme tick that had some pretty powerful infectious agents in it. And Lyme disease can be a pretty serious thing. I have a friend that died from Lyme disease. So I was really sick by, by the time that a month or two had passed. I was very, very ill. And I wasn't able to walk. I, I was actually paralyzed. I was paralyzed for the better part of three weeks. And I'd fallen in my apartment one, one night before going to bed. And I landed on a tile floor and I hit my head. I was on the tile floor for 14 and a half hours. Mm. And I, during that experience, I just, I just, I just, I, was, I couldn't move anything in my body, my, nothing. I couldn't move a finger, I couldn't move a toe. I was absolutely motionless. And I was screaming for help. Nobody came. And it, was, it was such a desperate situation. It was incredible. But while I was on the floor, I contemplating my life experience, I thought about the fact that I may never walk again. Do I still have the, the resolve to present this film and this book? Could I do it from a wheelchair? If I had to. I, these, these are thoughts that I didn't, didn't count on having to, to work through. But I had to work through these incredibly powerful thoughts. And I also went, went through this incredible deep process about deciding what my life was, what, what my life meant. Because I was thinking to myself, this is, in, this is just a horribly dire situation that actually forced me into a deeper consciousness place within myself. And I decided that I, that I had to become more clear about who my what were my sources and what kind of human being I am from a source perspective. Mm. There's no superficiality at that point. I didn't have no room for superficiality. It was just too, too intensely powerful to, to, to omit the, the, the intensity of what I was contending with. So in the middle of all that experience, I decided that I had to ask myself, do I really love living? Do I want to live? Do I want to continue to live? Do I want to continue to live the way I've been living? Would I want to live if I had no body to move around and, and if I didn't have the mobility to move my body around, do I, would I still want to live? And, and how much do I like the, the thought of living under those circumstances? Could I do it? Could I do it? And I didn't have an answer for myself. So I went for about 30 minutes. I had no answer to the question, do I want to live under these circumstances? Mm -hmm. And about 30 minutes later, I started screaming for help. And because I screamed for help, I decided that I, that was my way of telling myself that I wanted to live. By screaming for help, it changed my whole perspective. And I just changed my thought process radically at that point on that bathroom floor. And I, and I came to a point from within myself that I, that I decided my soul was reaching out through me. My soul was, was awakening me to the fact that I was integrated. And I, I hadn't been integrated enough. And that the concept of being in self-deprecation at a very subtle sub subconscious level was something that I didn't, I never, I didn't tackle fully. I tackled it partially, but not fully. But with this experience, I tackled it fully. I, I just came, it all came to a head. The whole process brought my, my, my relationship with myself to an absolute head. And I worked really hard at, at healing myself, at becoming whole and becoming connected with my source and becoming the essence of my presence is what I describe the essence of my presence. I focused on the essence of my presence, which is my soul. 
And when I became well again, physically, I decided that that experience, I mean, the timing of, of that, going through this process, keep in mind, I'm planning on this film, mapping out this film, where I'm talking about my patients, life-threatening stories and, and stories about cancer and heart disease and all that stuff. And this was my story in the middle of, in the middle of the story, I was producing my story and the universe actually forced me to go through that at that time frame for an obvious reason. And it's it just, it was the, the linkage was just too incredible. It's too, too, too universally powerful for me. It's too dynamic. It was in, incredible, but um, I'm fully recovered from it. And, um, and that's just a beautiful part of that experience. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mark. You know, to, to be open and vulnerable to share your own experiences as a healer, as a healing change, change agent. And yeah, there are no accidents. I mean, that arc that you just described is something that all of us go through. And, you know, certainly when we, we are faced with some kind of disease, it becomes even more salient, right? So all of these areas that you mentioned, do, do I have the will to live? Do I want to live? Like, you know, the release of superficiality, the, the questioning of what is my life worth, that life review that happens maybe when, when we're faced with a life-threatening illness, all of these things that can happen down to, for me, I would say, the core of the healing process, which is that reconnection and that deep connection with your soul, your spirit, your, you, you know, your true self, whatever you want to call it, right, which seems to be the key ingredient for the healing to take place, right? It's, uh, or it's certainly, it's, it's, it's a deep part of the, of the healing process. And, and if you have any thoughts about that. And, and, and miracles are, are rapturous events. And they're, they're produced by divine agency. And the divine agency doesn't come from some external source. We are the divine agency. We are the universe. I always say that, you know, we, th we tend to think of the universe as something other than us, like a galaxy or like a place. We are the universe. We are the universe. And we don't, we don't, we don't have consciousness. We are consciousness. We are the consciousness that actually brings life to the universe. And I think it's so important to understand the extraordinary nature of miracles. Have the, have the ability to inspire such a such a transpersonal shift in all of us and to change the, the depth of who and what we are and to become deeper, more soulful beings is, is what our it's what our it's what our life is all about. You know, sometimes illness brings us to that place. But I think most of us these days also strive for touching into that place on a daily basis. And of course we know there's so many practices for us to make sure that we are working from source, we are connected with source, we understand what the streams are that we are connected to in source. Now, as you're in your work as an integrative nutritionist and energy practitioner, you obviously help heal um, when we're sick, but I suspect you also have some great advice for us on how we stay well. And of course we know that that's, and I remember you mentioning this in the movie, that's part of the beauty of what we call here in the West integrative practices, right? Holistic practices is to keep in harmony so that we might even prevent as much as we can. Of course there's environment, you know, you can't control when a tick is gonna come and bite you, you know, that kind of thing. There's, there's toxicity in our food. You know, we recognize that we live in a world that isn't always in our control. And there's toxicity in, in the earth and in our foods and, and, you know, in our environments, all of that withstanding. There are certainly ways that I'm sure you've learned um, and share with your patients on how we maintain not just resilience, but a sense of thriving, even through these crazy times that we've been in, pandemic, right? As just one example, climate change, all of these things. And so I'm wondering if you have any suggestions, advice, things that you've noticed um, across your work with so many patients that you feel like are kind of essential to, to living this life in, in a healing space? I do, I do. And I think that in the book, I actually listed, there's, there's what I call the three integral objectives and the five cardinal precepts. And I think those are the key answers to that question. Number one, the, the first integral objective is to realize our immortality. You know, to, 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 to live through yourself, with the, with the awareness, with the consciousness that you are an immortal being. Number two, to illuminate your divine, our divine wisdom, to, to, to turn on the light of our super consciousness and to try to keep it on as long as we can keep it on. I mean, invariably we, we fall off the horse, we have to get back on and that's just, that's just light. But I think we need to, to inspire ourselves to keep that light on. Number three, to access our unlimited power. 
So we are unlimited in our in our super conscious beingness. And I think to to tap into that unlimited power and to and to and to have expectancy around it. I think to 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 cultivate expectancy around our unlimited power is a beautiful part of that experience. Mm -hmm. Then there are five cardinal precepts to know the way. Again, being a Taoist, I, I believe that there is a way. And then the, the way of things is what I talk about there. To understand the a priori natural law of harmoniously submitting to the flow of life from birth to growth to growth to death and to rebirth. And to be in that flow of life, that continuous flow of life. Number number three, to balance to balance the energy, to become a master of energy and to live in rapport with the interconvertibility between energy and matter mm -hmm. and to awaken to the fact that they're, they're one and the same. They're not two different things. And we don't have to, we don't have to, to stretch any further than, than just living within our being to, 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 to do that. Number four, to flow from source, to emanate from the core of our immortal soul and, and to, to think about living our lives in a way that we can actually choose to tap into that source um, energy field and to, and, to, and to consistently grow through that process. Number five, to expand the mind, to cultivate higher consciousness and ultimately merge with the universal mind. That is super consciousness to me. So to me, super consciousness is to take our personal awareness in the moment and to merge it with the universal awareness, the universal consciousness, and to merge the two together, I think is a key to the process of becoming unified with awareness that actually creates that super conscious possibility of energy. It's beautiful. A lot of these principles really feel and sound um, the, the, the spiritual dimension of your work and the spiritual dimensions of your teachings here are very, very forward, right? They're, you know, they're very um, salient, right? They're, they're right front and center. And I love that because as you know, <laughs> so many of our practices, you know, in the mainstream world, they shy away from this aspect of our experience, our human experience. And yet you're also a nutritionist and you say to us, of course, that we understand that energy and matter are interchangeable. So how do you ex how do you explore this from a nutrition perspective? I know that some of your work is tied into working with energy to understand what kinds of nutrients on the physical plane, you know, nurture us, right? Literally, what kinds of foods we should eat, what kind of foods we shouldn't eat. I think you do some work with supplements and things like that. So with all of this work around the spiritual dimensions and the spiritual axis, how do you see the nutritional aspects of, you know, as part of the process? Starters, we know nowadays there are 150 autoimmune diseases, autoimmune diseases 150 autoimmune diseases, 72 percent of which are triggered by inflammation, chronic inflammation. So when you think about chronic inflammation from a food perspective, there are a number of icosanoids that are that are hormone-like structures in the body that are many considered to be the most powerful chemical agents in the body, and they're capable of producing inflammation or anti-inflammation depending on the good expression or the bad expression. And there's, there's fatty acids, there's six essential fatty acids. And fats are the raw materials from which hormones are manufactured. So these are hormone-like structures, these icosanoids. So the fats, the six essential fatty acids, produce um, a connection to the chemistry of our body that actually either produces inflammation or anti-inflammatory or neutral response. So there's three different categories. The first category is neutral. The second category is inflammatory. The third category is anti-inflammatory. This starts with food. Don't forget that. So foods produce one to six essential fatty acids. So if you have a, a, a if you're eating a food like like red meat, feeding a food like peanut butter, feeding a food like egg yolks, those produce arachidonic acid. That's a fatty acid that actually produces icosanoid two factors, or what we call thromboxane A2, leukotriene B4s. These are inflammatory agents. So inflammation is something that you can actually control based on the the, the, the consumption of foods that produce one of these one of these one or more of these fats. So the first, the first category is the neutral category, produces linoleic acid. So those foods that produce linoleic acid produce a neutrality. And the middle column is of the inflammatory foods. Those are the foods that actually we mentioned a minute ago that produce, uh, I, that produce arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is an inflammatory agent that causes problems with inflammation of the, of the heart, the blood, the, 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 the glands and organs, et cetera, et cetera. Third category is anti-inflammatory. So you think things like... Um, Things like um, organic produce, fresh organic produce is very anti-inflammatory. So you have three different categories that are actually starting with foods and then move into fatty acids. The anti-inflammatory is alpha linolenic acid. So you got foods, fatty acids, and then you've got the, the icosanoid factor. But if, again, if 150 
we had 150 autoimmune diseases. You got 72% of those autoimmune diseases caused by inflammation. And then you've got inflammation that's controllable at a nutritional level. So what we've done for many years with patients is put them on programs where they're, they're, they're moving down on the inflammatory production of chemistries, increased in the anti-inflammatory chemistries. And there's an interesting prospect we can actually convert the neutrals. There's, there's three different supplements, uh, evening primrose oil, black currant seed oil, and evening primrose oil. Those are anti-inflammatories. Those take, the, those take the neutral category and move them over to the anti-inflammatory category. So there's ways we can convert the neutrals, lower the inflammatories, and increase the anti-inflammatories. And, and the result is incredible. And I've seen, and that's what the film is all about. You know, The film sees patients that have beaten cancer. Two, there's two cancer patients that, that have told their story in, the, in our movie. And there's, there's some incredible stories of infertility. There's great stories about inflammatory manifestation in a number of different ways that people have corrected with the, with the, the programming and reprogramming of food. And again, I think that it comes down to food, produces fat, fat produces icosanoids, icosanoids give you the end result. And that's where inflammation is so key and so important and making such a difference. The world needs to know more about that. Yeah, I imagine. And I imagine you talked about this a bit in your book as well, did you? These yes. uh, particular, yes. we have some questions. All my, all my books. About it. Yeah, so, so if you're looking to dig in more in detail on some of these key factors that um, Dr. McCullough is talking about, we encourage you to also check out his books where you can really dive in in depth. Um, because, and it, certainly the things that you're saying could really apply to all of us. We can get a sense of what happens to our bodies when we eat um, fresh produce, organic produce, anti-inflammatory diets. This is one way of dealing with inflammation. You know, it's interesting. Yesterday, I actually gave a talk to the Contemplative Studies Group at Brown University. And there was a uh, scholar there who actually, Mark, if you haven't met, you, pr you would probably really enjoy meeting. His name is Heinrich. And he was, he was asking about the biofield because that's what I was sharing because, you know, that's my passion. He was asking about the biofield in the context of this massive inflammatory state that the world is in. So, you know, we're talking about how to reduce inflammation in the physical body through nutrition as, as one method. And you're also talking about the importance of spiritual connection. Do you see a link between spiritual connection, the biofield, and dealing with an inflammatory world? First of all, energy is everything. Everything is energy. So there's no question about the fact that everything is energy. So whether we're talking about the energy of, of, a, of, a, of a green bean, or whether we're talking the energy of the universe, those from the large, from the, from the vast to the tiny, you know, that, that's what the universe's energetic properties are all about. So he, he brings up a, a very thoughtful and very interesting concept that we think about the inflammation that we are exposed to with red meat or peanuts or whatever, egg yolks. But then we think about the inflammation that we're exposed to at a global level. You know, the fact that the planet is, is so inflamed right now, does that, does that influence our, our biofield? Of course it does, no question. I think separation is an illusion. You know, everything is interconnected. Everything is connected in every shape, way, and way and form. Is a web of connection. Is what the universe is all about. But I think it's a brilliant concept, and I think it, the answer is yes. Everything affects everything. But here's here's the way I prefer to look at that. You and I affect the universe. You and I affect. We're not just affected by the world. You and I affect the universe. So I think that with our meditations and our prayers and our transmission of energy to the universe, I think we make a difference. We make it a more beautiful and more loving and a more healed place. And, and I think that everything is so interconnected, we can take that interconnectedness to a beautiful level of healing, to a beautiful level of transmission, to a beautiful level of making difference and transformative change. So I think that that's who we really are and that's where we really live. Mm -hmm. It's so well said, exactly. And this is what I shared with Heinrich too, as I said, the promise of the biofield and all of the research that's pointing to how powerful our energy is to heal ourselves, to heal others, down to the cellular level, you know, a lot of what I've depicted in my book, as you know, Mark, you know, in, in uh, healing ourselves, biofield science in the future of health is really geared toward what do we know scientifically about the biofield in all of these ways? And what does it mean for humanity? And as you said, the key, I think the beautiful promise of the biofield is that it's showing us how unseparated we really are, how, how connected we are. And so that means we have a powerful influence on our inflammatory world which includes our choices, right? Our food choices, how we treat the earth, all of that, but also how we meet and touch each other and, and the healing work that we do with each other, like the work that you've done with your patients. It's been uh, pretty profound. And so that's a spiritual process for you and also 
you know, a, an advice process on things like nutrition. It's a, it's not an either or situation. We can work with the physical and the spiritual at the same time. Absolutely. What, what we talked about earlier too, a little bit is the idea that we developed a system called the electromagnetic muscle testing system. And it's an interesting procedure where we don't need to dialogue verbally. We just actually have two, two people interfacing, a practitioner and a patient. And you can raise up the arm, the deltoid factor, and you just check on the, the strength of the deltoid. But we can actually just think. We can literally think about wheat, peas, apples, celery, onions, whatever we want to think about. We think about that. And then there's either a pass-fail, or when you think about that energy field, you either have a positive or a negative response in the pass-fail context. Then what we do is we pulse it. So in other words, if, if onions fail, then we can actually pulse. How negative are onions? Minus one, two, three. Minus one to ten. So we just set up these, these concepts, these, these constructs for whether or not energetically something works or something doesn't work. And I mean, you can do that with anything, but it's nonverbal. And it's like, we're, we're feeling, we're feeling together all the time. And then this process It's beautiful because as we feel together, we, we learn and we grow together and we define together and we diagnose together. We diagnose from an energetic perspective. We diagnose from a, from a field perspective, from, from a love perspective. And I think that the compassion the love that exists between two people and they're doing this work, you're, you're doing it to help them. You're doing it because you want them to get better. You, they, they matter to you. It, you care. So all that comes into, into the energetic mix right. and, it, and it leads to some brilliant answers and some amazing, inspiring healing responses. It's incredible. It's beautiful. Do you teach people then how to really sense into their biofield and the subtlety of their biofield to inform them? You know, for example, holding a particular su supplement or a food in their hand and then sort of just checking in with the body either formally through muscle testing or some other path um, so that we can kind of tune into our body's wisdom in that way. Is there a practice? Yeah, like we're, we're, we're going to be at the Omega Institute in June. Okay. So we're doing yeah. a four, three day and three or four day intensive there in June to teach the whole system. But it's, it's something that I've done many years and I, I love doing it and it's a, and people are so excited about it. I did a presentation a number of times at a nearby theater here called the company theaters, 400, that's 400 people. I had 400 people in the audience and I'd call people from the audience, have them come up on stage. We'd actually have them think about certain things and then check their resistance. But when we did one interesting thing, you'll be interested, this is great. I handed out, I had 12 people come up, a dozen people come up and I handed out, I handed out envelopes. These are sealed envelopes. And inside the sealed envelopes were pictures. There are pictures of Mother Teresa, there are pictures of Mussolini, pictures of all kinds of good and bad options, you know, positive and negative options. And the patients came up, the, the subjects came up, and they held, they held them in their heart. And I muscle tested right down the low. If, if the arm goes down, you take a step back. If the arm goes up, you take a step forward. Arm goes down, back. Arm stays strong, step, step forward. We had all these people lined up in the stage. Then we had them open up their, their envelopes. I didn't know what they were going to be. Every one of them that took a step back was like a negative image, negative picture. Everyone that stood forward it had positive pic pictures. Gandhi, Mother Teresa, it was beautiful. It was incredible. And every one of them came out exactly as the energetic properties you would imagine. It's, it was wow. great. That's incredible. That is, that is incredible. So we have a lot of fun with energy. You can have a lot of fun with energy. And, and some folks, and I suspect you do this as well, um, you can actually do muscle testing since it is energetically based, right? Even when you're not physically in the same room. Is that correct? Of course. Of course, non-locally. Absolutely true. Yes. The, the, double, the double split experiment, experiment opened the door for that. So, so how, do no you do, how do you do that, Mark? Take us through that. It's, how does that work? It's, it's, it's not complicated at all. First of all, you have at least two people interfacing, patient or subject and practitioner. And then you can actually send... If let's say the patient has a brother living in Seattle that has a migraine headache, we can actually muscle test the person's ability to project energy. So send your intention to your brother to clear his headache, to, to make him feel better, to anti-inflame his head. Send that heartfelt energy to your brother. Take a few minutes to do that. How are you doing with that? Good. You're ready to be tested. Let's test how strong is the is the signal you just sent. One, one to ten. One, two, three, four, five. Keep going. Give it a little more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep going. Give it a little more time. It's a 10. Let's call your brother. My headache is gone. So we've, we've done things like that over the years. Wow. And, and it's, it's, there's so many different, like I said, fun experimental things we, we could do with it. And we have done with it over the years. We had a, had a beautiful time having fun with all that stuff. But I think non-locally is, is no different than doing local. You're, you're, you're taking the time to tune into somebody who is not here, somebody who is at a distance. And you can actually check 
through through a surrogate, through a proxy, like I just said, as to whether or not you reach that person and how you reach them. How how we we've done a lot of things like that. We we did one a se- seminar one night in in the South Shore of Boston area. We did a seminar in front of about five hundred people. We had one woman who's a psychic, very interesting lady, and we had her sit in a room off the main the main ballroom that we were in. And she sat in the back room and I said, I want you to project that the sun is over your left shoulder, a bright light of like the sunlight over your left shoulder. We had a curling camera, curling photography we were doing to, to the subjects in the, in the presentation. So we did, a, a, we did a baseline picture of her and she was all pastel pastel beautiful colors. And we had her picture for 15 minutes, that left shoulder with the sun over the shoulder. Mm. We brought her in front of the camera again. We, we redid her and the camera had this big, bright glowing light over her left shoulder. So she was able to actually create that energy through sort of simply manifesting it in her thought processes. And it, and it showed on the camera. It's, it's, in, it's in my, there's a book that I wrote called The Tao of Chi. It's the second book that I wrote, The Tao of Chi. And it's in The Tao of Chi. It's, it's a great picture. Oh, beautiful. We, we've done a lot of fun things with energy. <laughs> so are there particular energy practices that you recommend for your patients or for anyone? Yes. You know, one night many years ago, I it was in the month of June. It was a beautiful, starry, summery night. And I was out in my backyard and I was laying in a lawn chair, balmy night, and I kind of fell asleep in the lawn chair. And I had this incredible dream where I had these, these spirits come to me and they were teaching me something called Wen Chi Chu. I'd never heard of it. I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what it was about. It was just so, so incredible. And the long story short is they were teaching me spirals. Counterclock spirals stimulate, clockwise spirals destimulate. Mm. So if you want to add energy, you go counterclock. If you want to subtract energy, you go clockwise. It's called Wen Che Chu. It's contact thermogenesis. It's one of the eight brocades of Taoist medicine. And it's, it's been long since forgotten about. Mm. But I had a dream about it. I had a dream I was being guided through the process. And I was told that, that I could actually project counterclock spirals and, and enhance deficiencies. And I could actually counterclock, do clockwise spirals and I could actually release the inflammatory tendencies. So this is the inflammation and anti-inflammation. Uh, tai Chi, it's, it's like a Tai Chi. It's kind of like a Qigong. It's more like a Qigong. So it's an anti-inflammatory form of Qigong. And I have patients do it all the time. So whenever people get headaches, I say, go to, go to the top of your head and spin counterclockwise. Or spin clockwise, I'm sorry, clockwise to release, counterclockwise to stimulate. So if there's, if there's degenerative response, you go counterclockwise. If there's inflammatory response, you go clockwise. I have them do one take two quite often. I've written about it in three or, three or four of my books. Oh, that's so neat. It reminds me actually of a demo that Donna Eden did recently at a chi gathering that we had in San Diego to help show people what energy can do. And she did a similar thing uh, with someone muscle testing them afterwards to show the differences in their energy, literally after you know doing counterclockwise and clockwise movements in the field quite far from him. So it's amazing. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's incredible. One of the interesting things we do too, we have charts in our office. We have all the visceral connections in us. So liver, kidney, gallbladder, heart, small intestines, lungs, spleen, all that stuff. So we got all these visceral references in the chart. We go to the patient, we go to the kidney and we muscle test it. What is the energy of the kidney? One to 10, minus one, minus two. So it's minus two is a deficiency. You want to enhance it. So we go to the kidney, we go counterclockwise both right and left kidneys, counterclock, counterclock. We retest them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you, you repair the energy the energy imbalance by Wen Chi Chu. So you, get, you, record the, you record the diagnostic concept, you know, whether they're, whether they're deficient or excess, the different gall, liver, liver gallbladder, kidneys, spleen, all that. So you, you record all the visceral connections that are, that are deficient or excess. Then you do the corresponding Wen Chi Chu, and then you re, re, retune them, so to speak. And you can, you can take such drastically imbalanced numbers, minus five, minus 10, you can actually boost those up to the plus five, plus six, plus seven. And we actually correct those and we actually post them. It's, it's incredible. Oh, wow. That's so cool. That's, it sounds like a lot of fun and it sounds like there are a lot it's of- It's great fun. It's great fun. I know Jason is throwing in the chat for those of you who are interested, the Tao of Chi book and Mark's upcoming Omega workshop. So, um, you know, if you're interested, of course, in diving a little bit deeper into these actual practices, it'd be great. Mark, is there, um, is there a particular go-to practice? Like if I were to ask you, like, what's the number one practice that you would recommend that we all do for our health? 
what would you say? Maybe it's not a practice. Maybe it's a food. Maybe it's an attitude. I'm just curious from your perspective, working with 60,000 patients, if there's a, if there are these key factors or a key practice that you would recommend we do. I, I think I'd say physically, cellularly, it's nutrition. It's taking the time to, to support your body at a, at a physiological level and to to do it with energy too. Like you said a minute ago, we check your foods from an energetic perspective. I'm not just looking at food from the, the material perspective, but from the energetic perspective, that's important. Number two, I think from a spiritual perspective, um, there's an, there's an exercise in the new book, The Way of Miracles, called the Observing Yourself Exercise. You go to a mirror, and you look in the core of your eyes and then the center of your eyes for 10 minutes, 10 straight minutes. And your goal is to do two things. Number one, to feel the essence of your presence. Feel the essence of your presence while you're looking in your eyes. Feel the essence of your presence. That's number one. Number two, to actually move into that and to become that, to consciously move into that the essence of your presence, to become the essence of your presence. So not to just look at it, but to become it, to, to, em, to em, emit from that place. The, number, the third thing I think is really important is to do some kind of energy work consistently. And I think Wen Chi Chu is probably what I'd recommend. So nutrition, mm -hmm. the observing yourself, spiritual exercise, and Wen Chi Chu. I think Wen Chi Chu is really powerful. I think it's, it's consistently shown us that we have the ability uh, to, to change the energy field. So in other words, you may want to diagnose the energy field. Like I said, if you want to understand, it, you want to know where the imbalances are, and then you want to change them. You want to heal them. You want to improve them. And Wen Chi Chu allows us to do that. That's so neat. Thank you. That's so clear and, and, and sounds like something that's really actionable for all of us, things that we can really do. And that's really wonderful. Well, we do have several questions, and I want to honor everybody who's jumped in here on Zoom to ask uh, questions of Mark. This is an incredible opportunity, of course, to have him answer questions that we have. Um, oh, first question, a question just popped up in chat. How do you spell Wen Chi Chu? W-E-N-C-H-I-E-C-H-U. W-E-N, Wen, C-H-I-E-C-H-U, Wen Chi Chu. Thank you. Thank you. So John is asking a question about the movie and the book, and he says, in the Way of Miracles book in the movie, do you actually provide details on how to develop the skill of self-healing? Yes, I think that's, that's for all intents and purposes, what, what the purpose of the book and what the film is really about. As I said earlier, when Christine and I set out to, to produce this film, and when I set out to write the book that works with the film, we, we were determined to end up in a place where we could feel that the world was more at peace, more healed, more whole, more joyous, more loved. And I think that we did that. I think that, I mean, I feel that. I feel that, that we, we did what we set out to do. And I think that that whole process of improving one's health, improving one's well-being, healing oneself is what the book and the film are all about. Yeah, and, and if I might share, um... Oh, Beth is asking if someone can type the spelling. Jason, if you got that spelling, maybe you could throw it in the chat. You know, the question of self-healing, I think, is in all of our minds because we know that because we're all interconnected, we heal with the earth, we heal with each other. Every healing practitioner I've talked to always says, they're just a healing facilitator. You're doing your own healing. So, of course, everyone wants to know, like, how do I do that? Um, I'll just share in the book that I wrote, the last part of that book is called The Healing Keys. And they're actually very simple, actionable things that you can do on a daily basis to facilitate your self-healing. And these are principles that I think aren't unique to me. You know, this isn't like new stuff that I've personally come up with, but what I've observed from my work in both clinical psychology, healing practice, and the science. And I'll just tell you what they are. Of course, you can learn more about them in my book, but uh, the first one is grounding. Really, it's grounding for vitality, connecting with the earth. Mark, I know you feel very strongly about that, right? course. The second is flowing with emotions. Um, emotions are a key component of our health. I know we haven't chatted about that too much during this hour, but emotional health um, takes us a long way. And so learning how to work with our emotions and flow with them energetically, work with different um, emotions and allow them to come and go without repressing them is very important. And you can use key breath work and meditative exercises and energy work exercises to do that. And I share some of that as well. The third key that the data actually suggests is really powerful is creativity. And it's something that a lot of us don't think about, but creativity can be a very, very powerful healer. 
The fourth is um, manifesting your healing intention so that you're actually aligning your mental force with your vital force. And this has been the key of so many practices like Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, and others, meditation. All of these have actually served as a way for us to connect both our minds and our energy together. And that can help us foster powerful healing. And, you know, there are others, but probably the, the most profound one, Mark, and you've mentioned this early in, in our discussion is surrender, right? It's really, it, it, in some sense, you know, we get in our bodies, we feel our feelings, we open to creative force to bring in new energy. That's a way for us to continuously be flowing with energy. We open the heart to connection. That's another obviously huge one. That's part of the healing keys, but ultimately we have to surrender all of it. And what strikes me about this is the initial part of our conversation where Mark, you kind of went through, you know, this process in your own way in that 14 hours, right? Which you've probably seen with your patients where ultimately you you do surrender, right? You have to release from the conditioned mind. You have to release in, in essence from almost everything you know and open to grace. Absolutely true. I think I think it produces a peace that's unparalleled. You you can't you can't attain the quality of peace in any other form than you can with surrender. Surrender is the maximum expression of peace. It's the most perfect way to, to reach a, a, an, an optimal place of peace. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. So beautiful. Kim is wondering, Mark, if you have a podcast. I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay. But you are on many podcasts, though, and I suspect that if people go to your website or find you on social yeah, media. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, I have a lot of radio shows I've done over the years, a lot of a lot of information there, no question. It's yeah. markmancola.com. Yeah, markmancola.com. If you go there, you'll get to hear Mark as a guest, not necessarily a host, um, but you'll get a lot of his wisdom through all of the wonderful media he's done. Kim is asking about a, a list of practitioners nationwide so she could find a like-minded healer in San Diego, for example. You know, she can actually, if she goes to our website and she tracks us down, we can give her some information. Okay, great. So go to markmancola.com if you're interested in learning more about uh, about practitioners too and connecting with a, a like-minded practitioner. So Mark, John is asking, how does someone do effective muscle testing on their own? In his case, he said he's tried several things, but he hasn't really been able to see much effect. Um, but he notices that when someone does the muscle testing on him, it seems to work. Yes, I, I think that there's there's many different ways to do that. One of the things we taught, there's one, one of the books that I wrote is called, um, actually Whole Health, not the Whole Health, there's two Whole Health books. There's, a, there's one book that's just called Whole Health. That's the, that's the book that actually discusses that more, more in detail. But there's a process where you hold your hand in front of your heart, like so, and you try to push the hand. So you're, 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 if, you're, if, the hand, if the hand caves in, it's a weak response. If it, if it resists, it's a strong response, obviously. So this is a yes, this is a no. So in terms of the dialoguing with the body, you could ask a question like, is, is, is it healthy to eat too much sugar? Obviously, the hand craves, caves in. Is it, is it healthy to eat a lot of organic vegetables? And the hand is strong. So you can actually do a pass-fail test on yourself by putting left hand in front of the heart, right hand is a push factor. So you ask the questions, like I said, in a yes-no fashion, you can get a yes or no. So it's, it's the resistance test. And it's just no different than the muscle testing. And you can get pretty good at it if you work with it. Mm, beautiful. So yeah, practice, practicing this. And of course, we can learn more from you in your um, more extensive workshops on how to do this, I suspect. Yes. Mm. Janine has an interesting question. She wants to know, um, do you address or include all the space within and between of whatever you're addressing? So she says when she addresses, for example, in her own work, all the space within and between, it puts her into an almost beyond the veil experience. So any comments on that? Yes, I think that when I think of the space of the universe, I think of it as being full. But I think of it as being full with consciousness. I think consciousness is, is what fills all the empty space. So it's not really empty. But I believe the answer is consciousness. And, and the answer is yes, I, I, that's, I do address that. I think that I'm, I'm of the persuasion that, that it is very consciousness-centered. It's consciousness-centricity, so to speak. 
that the universe doesn't have any really voids. There's no voids anywhere. Everything is, is filled with a vacuum of consciousness and awareness at a deeper level. So I think the answer is yes and yes, consciousness, and yes, I do work with it. Mm, beautiful. Finally, John has a question that I think we could all relate to, especially now as we're closing out 2021, moving into 2022. We've been in you know, a significant couple of years of pandemic, worldwide pandemic. And he's wondering from your view, if you see any causal link between what we've been going through in the pandemic and a disruption of the interconnected energies of the world. So he's, he's curious about energy disruption and you know the pandemic we've talked about non-separation that everything is connected we have climate change all these things and, and if i might you know in, in interpreting some of john's questions are we we don't all feel in coherence right now <laughs> you know to put it mildly right of course you're right about that there are a lot of forces too that seem to be continuing to drive us into decoherence um you know certainly fear factors driven by media um, our own anxiety about the pandemic, which is very real, our own anxiety about the state of our planetary health, you know, all of these things have an effect on us, right? Um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So I point people to the to the Tai Chi circle. Mm -hmm. The Tai Chi circle has it's 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 about the, the dark side of the circle of the light interior and the light side of the circle of the dark interior. And that's that's a metaphor. For the fact that everything is interconnected, nothing is separated, everything is together, everything is unified, part of unification. And it says that everything flows from birth to growth to death to rebirth. And it's really important for us to remember that, that bad things aren't just bad things, they're bad things that actually set up the beauty of the good things that we have. So, so I think that it doesn't end with the dislocation of the universe, of the, of the planet rather, so, so to speak. You know, the, So the virus may have initially done some, some, some tear down work, some, some rip it up work, some some deconstruction work, but it's going to actually culminate with new construction. So, you know, everything everything has to be seen from the perspective of moving moving from the uh, the unhold to the whole, moving from a place of breakdown to a place of buildup, from a place of darkness to a place of light. So that's all part of the process, like I said, from birth to growth to death to rebirth. And I think that that's that's important to, for us to remember that. That it's not it's not just an isolated negative experience that we're stuck with. It's flow. It's 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 an evolutionary process. It's ever unfolding, and it doesn't end in a dark place. It, it, it always comes in a beautiful place of light, and it's the dark that allows us the beauty of understanding that contrast. Thank you for that. Thank you for reminding us of the natural laws of the universe, the generating, orchestrating, and destroying forces of the universe, which we can, of course, call God. Right and that's sure the, the, the law of the law of things and um, taking a step back and reminding ourselves of that cycle uh, can also bring us some peace. I think it certainly does for me Good personally. Question. Absolutely. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much for your time today. It's just been a pleasure and an honor. You are such a leading light in this field. You've done such incredible work for so many people, helping them on their healing path. And we're so pleased that you've taken some time to talk with us. I wanna remind everybody to check out Mark's resources. Go to markmancola.com. Check out the book, The Way of Miracles, the latest one. He's got several, of course. Um, and the film, and we're so pleased to also announce to you to you all that, all that. As, in Mark's generosity and Christina's generosity, that if you haven't seen The Way of Miracles yet, you simply must. It's just an amazing film. No doubt, um, no, no surprise that they're winning the awards that they're winning for their film. And they've made a special offer for those of you, first of all, who have joined us as Chi Contributors. Thank you. If you don't know about the Chi Contributorship, let me tell you about it really quickly. We are a social profit that is a 501c3 nonprofit. And we have a wonderful circle, a family of Chi Contributors who receive all of these webinars and AMAs. We have about 60 of them with leading lights like Mark, with Greg Braden, with um, Donna Eden, Bruce Lipton who's joining us next week, and so many more. You get full access to all of those webinars, conference presentations with Deepak Chopra, Larry Dossi, and so many more. You'll get a free ticket to the Way of Miracles with your contributorship 
when you join as a contributor now, and that's good for an entire year. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. You'll also get a free book, ebook on biofield devices, which is heavily researched that I actually wrote. Um, it's an incredible resource covering all of devices from non-invasive brain stimulation out to scalar wave therapy. So you get a tremendous amount of value for your contributorship. It's a tax, de tax deductible donation of 108 on purpose, magic number a year or nine bucks a month. So nutrition wise, I can tell you, you'll get a lot of nutrition out of being part of the Chi Contributor family. So I do hope that you'll join as a Chi Contributor. Um, the acronym for God, Generating, Orchestrating, and Destroying Forces. And I like to say, Cindy, Goddess is the Generating, Orchestrating, Destroying uh, Davies that Empower Soul Service, because that's what Shakti is, but that's maybe for another conversation. Margarita's writing in that she loves being a contributor. She gets so much out of it. I do hope that you all will continue to be part of our family in any way. If financial hardship is an issue for you, or you just want to share this webinar with others, Please know that as a social prophet, we try to spread this out as broadly as possible. And this webinar will be available for free replay for the entire weekend for 48 hours because we want to make sure that everyone has access to Mark's wisdom. Do check out the movie. And Mark, any parting words that you'd like to share, anything we didn't cover you want people to know about? Just, just, a, just a reminder to everyone watching that they are incredibly extraordinary that they're, they're more than they think they are. They're more than they're aware of. And don't wait until you cross over to, to learn it. Take advantage of the, of the consciousness experience it's given you right now. And to embrace the magnificence that you are, to embrace the energy that you are eternally uh, expressive of, and to enjoy the miraculous self that you have. Oh, thank you so much. Wow. What a beautiful way to to end our time together and jump into what I hope is a beautiful and relaxing weekend for all of you and uh, happy holidays. Hopefully we'll see you back next week for our connection with Bruce Lipton and um, wishing you all the very best. And Mark, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your presence with us today. Thank you. Take care, everybody. See you soon.